today's topic is people who are joining together for a zimun, uh, in particular at a wedding hall, in a lunchroom, in a restaurant, in a uh, hotel, who exactly is conjoined, who actually joins together, um, and who does not join together. So the, we're on page 415, number 48. The Pisgah says, So obviously if it's a Bnei Baal Habayit, Bnei Beito, if it's going to be a person in their household, obviously they join together, right? That's a given. And similarly, it doesn't just mean, oh, I'm the father of the household and I'm inviting my family for dinner, right? We're eating dinner together. But if I invite people to a meal, to a wedding, to a bar mitzvah, to a bat mitzvah, to a simcha, so I'm, making, I'm inviting my friends and family. And in that case, we are all t- considered together. And I prepared the meal, I hired someone to prepare a meal. Even if you only have two people at a table and you have ten tables, in What are they there for? They're because of me, because I invited them to come to this dinner. It's as if they're eating at one table. Ah, oh, there are different tables? No. Because we're all coming for the singular reason of a simcha that was invited by one balabayit, or two if it's a wedding, that's the same idea, then they are mitzarif together. Even if you don't have ten people at a table, or three people at a table, they all can join together for a zimun. And what about in a lunchroom? We're all there in yeshiva together. We're all eating in a joint lunchroom. You know, lunch is at noon. We're all eating from the yeshiva's food. We're sitting down, we're eating together, we're going to join as one. Same idea, even if you're at different tables. You can still join together. So again, we have a case of a wedding, a case of a yeshiva. However, if you have an institution, you don't have like a real set lunch. You have, like, you know, lunches during these hours. Ella zeba mikodem vezemucha. This guy comes at this time, that guy comes at that time. Vaderach hu shekol echad shegomer lechol mevarech vachozer limodav. And a guy quickly eats, benches, and goes back to his learning. Ve'od shachirim b'tchilat ochla v'chazer bazeh. And then they go back to what they were doing, back to work, back to whatever they were up to, yeshiva. The two tables are not joined together. So a lot depends on the type of meal it is. When we're saying we have a, it's like a real set, a set small window for lunch and we're all eating together. Or it's kind of like guys are coming in every five minutes, every ten minutes, every fifteen minutes, coming, going, coming, going. That perhaps would make a difference. In the first case, you'd bench together, you'd bench together. In the second, you would not. Okay, fine. Next paragraph. And what about in a restaurant? Or at a hotel? Everyone eats there by themselves. Every family on their own. No one. Right? You have the Greenbergs over here, you have the Cohen's over there. No one ever realizes they're separate, eating together, right? They're separate families. They're starting maybe at the same time. Maybe, they're even starting this, maybe they are starting at the same time. It doesn't matter. You wouldn't be even start if we're not eating together. We just happen to be sitting next to each other. They cannot come together. If you have three and you have seven next door, you can't join together for ten. What about if you're at one big table, three or ten, so in a situation where you have, let's say, you have a simcha, so you're making shavu brachot, right? So you have ten men over at this table. And you're also sitting there. You're not invited to shavu because we're at the table next door. You can still respond. You just can't leave the bench, and we can still respond and partake in the zimun basara. And if you're sitting in a hotel, you're sitting in a restaurant, 
or somewhere else. Three people are sitting at a table. Let's say you're sitting in a cafeteria at work and everyone's a total stranger, right? You have no idea the person is next to you. In your, you know, your office place in Israel, they have you know, big lunch rooms, right? Let's say they have a dining hall and these office place in Israel, everyone's Jewish, right? But you don't even really know the person next to you. But guess what? Even though everyone eats their own, and even though there's no connection with the second person, since the table conjoins them, they're sitting around the same tish, sitting around the same table, that is considered, the Mishnah says, So eating around the same table creates echad, creates it unifies them. If you have ten people sitting around the table, sitting around the table, however, not if their backs are away from each other. They have to be facing each other for that echadness. Right, that's what you see on the back of a chair. You know, you're know, sitting on people on benches or chairs and they're sitting out. That would not join together. They're facing each other the way this table set up. Maybe it's considered coming together. I did not know that. Um, and they were not come together. Okay, top of the page. Make sure you don't have anything. Make sure you don't have any Make sure you have anything dirty and disgusting in this lunchroom that you're drawing people together. Because then that would be perhaps a hefsek that would break them from eating. And also, you don't want to have people eating meat and who are bringing milk. You don't want to have them at the same table either because that's other. That could also be problematic as well. Um, the last case that I wanted to point out for eating, obviously, guys are in a boat is also good enough to join together. What about if you're in a plane here? If you take a look, what about if you're in, all in a plane, right? So there's no tables or you're in a train. Is that considered echad or not, right? So, so the answer is they can as long as they intended to do so. Like we are eating this meal together, and therefore they can. If everyone's eating on their own by the airplane, they can't afterwards say, okay, let's bench together. That would be a problem. Um, okay. In the last case. Is what about if ten guys are on a bus together? He says there, he doesn't like the idea of saying a locano. He could do a zimun, but not to say locano, even if you're on a bus together. And last but not least, if and obviously if the if you're on the bus or you're on a train or on a plane, and the is an Andrew, you don't say yevarechet balabaitaza. You should say the nesach. I've never heard that before, but there you go. He says that you say a different harachman if you don't have a balabai. At the end, there, very, very, in the last two lines in that section, that's what he says the nusach should be. Fascinating that you should, you know, you should give a bracha for your traveling and not necessarily for the balabai, since there's no balabai, or the balabai isn't Jewish in the situation where you're on a train or a plane or automobile. Um, an interesting uh, halacha, not a halacha, it's a minhag and what to do. And I never actually considered that before, but I guess it would make sense to kind of change that nisach in terms of your uh, bal abayid when you're traveling on public transportation. Okay.